Rithin Open Doors is always a highlight weekend for me. I love peeling back the layers of history to find out how Rithin became the sort of town it is. Hidden Gem is probably an overused statement nowadays, but Rithin really is. It's far enough away from the English border, but actually hidden beyond the Cluidian range, so that most of the time anything happening there wouldn't be noticed by prying eyes. Over the years I've picked up a few interesting stories about Rithin, and today I'd like to share a couple of those with you. But I must say I'm no historian, and these are stories that I find particularly interesting, and I hope you do too. We're really lucky that in such a small town, we've got a magnificent castle in the middle of it. It's the stories about the castle that I'd like to share today. Many of you will know in mid-1600s, King Charles I lost his head, and Oliver Cromwell took over the running of Great Britain. It was decided to get rid of as many castles as possible and destroy the royalist culture. At the bottom of Rackwood Street, just in the middle of Rithin, you'll find the wool shop and the police station, just behind which there's a car park and that's where reputedly Oliver Cromwell's army stood on bombarded Rithin Castle. It was razed to the ground and lots of the rubble can be found in all sorts of different houses throughout the Vale. Looking up Rackwood Street, you can see Castle Street at the top and if you look right, you'd be able to see the oldest timber-framed house in Wales, Mount Cluida Dray. But I want to concentrate on our entrance into Rithin Castle. As you go through the grounds of the castle, you're taken with how many different layers of history there are all in one spot. You've got the Witch's Duncan Pool, you've got the enormous walls that made this a fortress at one stage. You've got the dungeons, and then you've got the, this magnificent building that came out of the ashes of the Civil War. Although Rithin is known as a medieval town, I particularly find the stories around the 1850s to the 1940 period most interesting. In the late 1800s, the Cornwallis West family owned the castle, and Patsy came into their lives. Patsy married William Cornwallis and she was a 16 year old from Irish gentry. She had been having an affair with the then Prince of Wales who became Edward VII of Britain. She may well have married Cornwallis to save her reputation. The king didn't seem to mind how many mistresses he had but he used to visit quite regularly to Rithin Castle and the affair carried on for some time. For those of you who are familiar with Netflix, The Crown and The King's Speech, the movie, you'll be familiar with Edward VII because he was the autocratic bullying father of our Queen Elizabeth's dad. As it happens, years before, Patsy's mum had actually been asked to leave court because she had been flirting with Albert and Queen Victoria took great exception to it. Patsy had three children, George, Daisy and Constance. There is some conversation about their parentage, but they all married very well. Daisy became a real princess and married a prince from Germany um, in a big societal wedding down in London. The witnesses to the wedding were the King and the Prince of Wales. The wedding was written up in great detail in the national press, down to all sorts of detail about the dress, the dresses of the bridesmaids, the dresses of the people who went along to the wedding, to all the presents. It was a massive affair. Patsy's son, George, married Jenny Churchill, the mother of Winston Churchill. She'd been widowed when she was 40, but had been part of the set that used to come up for parties. And she met George. They married when she was about 45 and he was 20 years her junior, but she was still a great beauty. She did spend quite a bit of time in Rithing Castle, although it was recognized that really her and George didn't have an awful lot in common. At that time, while she was married, 
Winston Churchill would have been in uh, his first phase of being in government in the 1900s. They were married for about 14 years from 1900 onwards, so I'd be amazed if Winston Churchill didn't come and stay with them. Ruthin Castle is now a hotel, spa and wedding venue, and members of the public can come and visit and have a cup of coffee or a meal at any time. It is amazing to think that a town with only 5,000 people in it could have a venue that has had such an impact on powerful people within the United Kingdom. Ooh, I forgot to say, P.S. Patsy's third child, Constance, got married to the second Duke of Westminster. Just had a little bit of help from the King to try and convince him that she was a good catch. <laughs>